an ad. I just totally blanked on this yesterday. Um, when we started exploring the equality operator, and we, we looked at it in depth and realized that when we say it checks the value of the two operands, in the case those operands are variables of a class type, it means it's comparing references, not like the sequence of characters in the string. Um, there's a special term that you'll see in the reading and that you'll see elsewhere. And so I wanted to go back and add that to this comment block. So let's do that. Um, the term is called an alias. So when you see something referred to as an alias, or when you say these two things are aliases, it means that there are two variables that refer to the same object. So it's just a special term for that. So I don't want that to be confusing when you come across that in the future. So I wanted to add that in. So yesterday we focused on the equality operator to check if references are equal. Um, we then realized that if we actually want to check if two strings have the same sequence of characters, we need to use the equals method. Um, so we went through that. And then where we left off is we were working our way through using the compare to method to determine if one string comes before or is less than the other string lexicographically. Okay, so kind of like alphabetical order, but we have that weirdness with capital letters. Um, so again, if, if we're saying string one dot compare to string two, if that result is less than zero, then string one is less than string two. If that result is greater than zero, we say string one is greater than string two. So what we've done so far here is we want to print out which string comes first. And so we're storing um, which string that is in this variable first string. And now we're to the point where we can like print that out. So we can say like system that out dot println. The first string is first str. And I see students write a lot of code just like this, um, primarily on like practice free response questions or on the exam um, when you don't have BlueJ to help you out. When you do have BlueJ to help you out, you try to compile this and it doesn't compile and it tells you that first str is undeclared. Okay. So watch out for this pitfall, especially when you're writing code by hand. The reason why this variable first str is undeclared is because while we do have a variable called first str and we are declaring it, meaning telling Java its type right here, the scope of a variable is limited to the innermost pair of curly brackets, the innermost block. So this variable f first str doesn't exist. It is not accessible beyond this block. This variable first str is another variable, a, sep a, a different one, just happens to have the same name. It doesn't exist outside of this block. So there is no variable first str declared here. Okay. The solution to this is when you do want to initialize a variable within an if else if else statement, you need to declare that variable before the if else if else block. So up here, I need to declare first str as a string. And then I can simply initialize it inside of my if else if. Because the scope of this variable first str is now the rest of this entire method. Um, because that's the innermost block, that's the innermost pair of curly brackets. That's the first pitfall to look for. So make sure you're declaring your variables. If you're initializing variables inside of an if else if block, make sure you declare them before that block. The second pitfall to watch for is make sure that things, that your, your variable is guaranteed to be initialized. Again, I see this when you're writing code by hand, not so much in BlueJ. Because in BlueJ, when I try to compile this, the compiler tells me, no, 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 no. The variable first str might not have been initialized. So the Java compiler is smart enough to realize that my if else if doesn't cover all possible situations. Um, because if the result is zero, neither this line is going to execute nor this line is going to execute. So the way I can solve that is I can either add an else 
um, to ensure that first str is initialized. Or I can initialize it up here to a default value, let's say null, um, so that um, I'm guaranteed that by the time I get to this line of code, first str has been initialized. And now it actually compiles. So those are two pitfalls to watch out for. Again, primarily when you're writing code by hand. Make sure you declare your variables before your if, else, if, else blocks. And make sure that um, they get initialized either by one of those blocks or you give it a default value. And then you'll be in good shape. Um, so the fact that we really need to be a little, I wanna print a different message if they're equal. It doesn't make sense to try to print null. In fact, that will crash. So let's actually, we need to only execute this line of code if the value of first str is not null, right? If it's still null, we don't wanna run this line of code. And so while yesterday I was complaining, or at least trying to be empathetic to the sense that, oh, it's unfortunate the equality operator doesn't compare a sequence of characters, but I reassured you that sometimes we really do want to compare the reference. Here's an example of that. We do actually want to use, um, in this case, the inequality operator. We want to say if first str is not equal to null, then we'll print the first string as this. This line of code is only going to execute if first str is not equal to null. Otherwise, that means the strings are equal, so let's print something about that. Strings are equal, just for completeness. So again, good example here of using the inequality operator to actually look at the reference. Um, the value of that variable and see that it is not null. All right. At this point, we need a little bit of practice. 